Hi, and welcome to another edition of SCZ Live. I am Shanae, and I'm here in our Australia, South America bird and mammal barn with Michaela, one of our zookeepers, who is going to talk to us about enrichment today. Michaela, what is enrichment and why is it important? So, um, enrichment is basically anything we give the animals to kind of give variety to their day. It um, evokes uh, natural behaviors from them. So. Um, if you've been watching these videos, you might have seen the grizzly bear get an ice treat and the lion got a pinata. So, you know, the lions know that that's not a real animal, but it provokes that behavior of stalking and tearing it apart and shredding it and stuff like that. So, um, so that's the intent behind um, enrichment items. So, today I'm going to talk about a bunch of the different kinds of enrichment. So, there's different categories. Um, there's dietary. So we make jello sometimes for some animals, um, peanuts, honey, um, seasonal fruits, um, pumpkins are real popular um, the mammals. And then we've got manipulable items, so they have to manipulate like puzzle feeders of some sort to get the treats out. So they might have to roll it around, depending on if they have fingers or not, they can pick stuff out, roll it around. Um, a lot of these are just regular dog um, puzzle feeders that they have to figure out. You can put a, like a hard boiled egg in there and uh, the quaddy or whoever has to figure out how to get it out. Uh, this is what we call a raisin board. So we can stuff raisins in there and some animals that can like use a, a stick as a tool and they can pop them out. Other animals just kind of scratch them out. Um, we do a lot of repurposing. So these are some frisbees. We had a bunch of frisbees donated. So I made a little puzzle feeder out of them. That's really creative, and that's one of those things that people could do in their house with things that they have. They can. Um, then we've got um, sensory items. So we've got some wind chimes made out of some bamboo. So we might put that outside of an exhibit, and when it's windy, they'll just have a different noise to listen to um, or play with, depending on the animal we can fit in with them. Sometimes we do some like bubble bath um, interaction stuff. Uh, we can blow bubbles for them. A lot of animals really like scents and spices, so we got you know, all kinds of perfumes and sprays. They're very scent oriented, so they'll scent mark and rub mm -hmm. on them and roll and do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I was also going to say a lot. A lot of the stuff we don't really use on exhibit, so there's two different categories of enrichment. Um, natural and non-natural or artificial enrichment. So when you come to the zoo on most days, you won't see all these colorful things. Um, on exhibit, we might use more like these. Um, so they kind of blend more in with the environment or like pine cones uh, with sprays on them or whatever. Um, I also, and I run a volunteer group. So we have um, six to 10 volunteers that come every month and they make a lot of these kind of things. So one night we had a little sewing night and they made puzzle figures out of fabric stuff. Um, okay, so then another, the fourth category of enrichment is um, interaction. So like we've seen with the um, ambassador animals going out and visiting others. So that, that's an uh, interspecies interaction. Sometimes if we are bringing in a new animal to that exhibit or a new next door neighbor to an animal, that's kind of um, enriching for the animals, changing up their day and how they perceive the world, so. So then I'm going to talk a little bit about stuff you can probably do at home for your pets. If you have dogs or cats or birds or whatever, um, you probably might even already be doing some enrichment for them and you just didn't know that that was what it was called. So if you play tug of war with your dog or if you throw a ball for them, you know, that's interacting with them and um, provoking play behavior. So uh, this is a tennis ball tied inside of a sock, so that's a toy that you can maybe make for your dog. And this is just some fleece braided and tied mm -hmm. in knots, so that could be a little tug of war toy. Um, any kind of box you can cut holes in and, and make a puzzle feeder essentially out of it. So they can glue that back closed and they have to roll around to get their dog food or treats or whatever out of it. Um, toilet paper tube, you can cut a little them and um, have to roll around, you can even paint them for some fun activities. That could be the art project for the day. It could be. Uh, this is a little more complex one, so I glued some, some together, and you can use clothespins to hold them together. That works pretty good. Oh, that's clever. And 
Then I just use some um, paper towel, or you can use newspaper to stuff the ends. So put the treats in and stuff the other ends, and they have to like roll it around to get it to fall out of the treats or pull the paper towels out. And then if you have a parent to help you, perhaps you can make something more like this. So you take some old bottles and you can cut a hole um, um, in them, and then maybe use like a broomstick or something like that if you don't have something fancy like this. And it's, it's called a spinner. So you can put treats in there and have to figure out how to get them to come out. That would be fun to do at home for the squirrels. It would. Pull on the bottle though and keep going. <laughs> but it'd still be enriching. Yes. Um, any questions or we're going to head in and see Miss Marty. Okay. Tell us who Marty is. Marty is a Tyra. So she is in the...